What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Ian's Life, and welcome back to the Budget Bush Plane Chinook. We left off last time with the torque tube on the controls, and we're picking up right there. But we've got a bunch of other stuff we're doing. We're on to sheet metal and some other really cool things, so stay tuned. So we're starting off our weekend with these guys. This is the bushing that is going to ultimately hold the torque tube here from moving forward and back. Currently, it's obviously, it's just loose in here and I can move the whole thing. So what we've got is a little piece of bent 4130 hole in it, a little countersunk um, uh, piece of plastic with a screw. So this guy, which is hopefully in focus, is going to right on there, front and back, and prevent the torque tube from moving forward and aft. So I've already made this one just as an experiment to see if this was how I wanted to do it. Now I need to make at least one more of these. I haven't decided if I'm going to do them on both the front and back for redundancy or not yet. Um, but either way, I need to make a few more of these and get them welded on. So now that we've got these in there, this may make more sense. I've welded in those two little tabs. We've got our little Delrin plastic blocks riding here. And now, as this rotates, those ride on the bearing block that holds the torque tube and keeps it to where it can't move forward and back. Now, I've got temporary wooden spacers in here because I haven't actually made my spacers for this yet. But functionally speaking, allowing for those still needing to be made, this now works. The back is moving along with it. Of course, it can't move forward and back either. So now, this guy is actually locked down. Right, guys so I haven't recorded anything today I decided I was gonna focus on getting things done rather than talking to camera a lot and we did get a lot done I've extended the side plates forward I've got those which are going to support the instrument panel they're supporting these two pulleys down in here uh, we've got a bracket that's also supporting the pulleys down in here these are gonna turn the control cables and put them back down this center tube all good stuff all needed to happen before we were done, so this is not a tremendous number of pieces, but it's a lot of figuring I had to do to decide how things were gonna happen. In any case, uh, I have a bit more work to do to secure these. We have not done a lot to secure them yet just because I wanted to make sure everything was gonna work out. Now that I am sure it's gonna work out, we're going to be taking these guys here, which are gonna go down in the corner uh, and support the sides a little further. My father's been hard at work on a little console over there, which is mostly done, though not secured to the airplane. So lots of sheet metal work, but we're very, very close. I can't believe I'm saying this. We're very close to hooking up the controls, at least in a test fashion, and actually running the uh, elevator with the new control system. So really exciting stuff. I'm gonna get back to work so that we can actually get to that.
So yesterday we ended on a high and a low note at the same time. We got our controls actually strung, our temporary cables are in front and back, and if I work the stick, things happen back there. So that's great stuff. Now, as expected, and I figured there would be some stuff like this, we found some glitches in the system. Uh, first things first, my temporary hardware is not up to the task of supporting everything. Our axle up here for the, uh, for the pulleys, we bent the uh, threaded rod I had there, and I can see the threaded rod I have here flexing. However, that's also showing me where some weak points are because I'm relying too much on material strength. Uh, this guy is because of a lack of spacers. That's going to be fixed. That one up there, I had thought about doing a billet support for that, and I think that today we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we've got some other little gotchas here and there that we're still dealing with, but that's the big one that I'm going to take care of today because once I've got that out of the way, I think I can freely move on to some new stuff. So we've made a couple of pieces this morning. I've got this guy here, which I was thinking I might make it a solid billet. I ended up just doing an aluminum uh, sheet piece with a little billet hasp over our axle. Our other guy over here, we've got our two pulleys. Uh, and I've just made this, which is just a little spacer that we're going to rivet on to the side like so, except down on the axle. That's going to do two things. It's going to set this guy out the right amount. Originally, I thought I'd just make a dumb spacer, just a little cylinder, but this will actually also give some support into the side, so as the, uh, as the uh, pulleys pull backwards on that axle, that'll pull on this, which will then be riveted into the side. Uh, that just leaves our middle here. I'm going to take a look at this for a minute and decide if I'm going to make maybe another vertical sheet metal piece uh, or just what I'm going to do here to support the middle of this. So I did a little more work off camera. We'd already created this little spacer. I also made another piece of sheet metal and just some little generic spacer pieces just to get it to where this whole thing is secure. This is way stronger than it was before, which is exactly what I was looking for. Now, as I move the mechanism here, things are a lot smoother because we've got everything well supported. I suspected that that was going to be necessary, but I kind of let myself figure it out as we went. But I think that's pretty good. So we're going to move on to the next place that I need to adjust, and that's right here. Now, as I move the stick up and down, the forces for the actual movement are getting taken up by these tabs right here and put into this block. Which means the fact that it is spaced out here without any support is not a good thing. Now, based off of my experiences up here, there's a surprising amount of force involved in this system, which makes sense. You've got leverage. If you put, you know, a few pounds way up here, well, that's just multiplied down to, at a short distance, a lot more pounds. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get my spacers made here. And similar to how I did down here, I'm going to reinforce things so that when I put them in here, that everything is held real well and doesn't want to flex. So time to break out some aluminum, make some spacers and get that secure. All right, guys, I didn't record all of it because I was doing a lot of little fine work, but I did record all of, I think, the important parts here. What I have been working on is what I would term the finish work for this whole section. Uh, starting from the inside, 
We've actually got these two riveted in and I got a little bit of uh, primer on them just to protect them from corrosion. Um, we'll probably get a little more primer on uh, these inside pieces before we close this section out and actually rivet them in place. Uh, the big visual item is the speed holes. I broke out the dimpled eyes and kind of went to town here. Now this serves two functions. Uh, you may be thinking that uh, they're pretty and they're light, and you'd be right and you'd be right, but they're also a strengthening item. Uh, dimpling like this really adds a uh, ability for the metal to be strong in more dimensions. So uh, this actually, in addition to removing weight, adds some strength to the piece. Uh, now we are carrying loads through this because we've got the axle for our pull pull cables. So I want this nice and strong. So that's a bonus. And let's be honest, it looks really cool. So uh, we've got those on both sides. Uh, I went ahead and added more of my holes for rivets here that is gonna tie into our original seat base. Um, again, the side plates are just clecoed in because I have more work to do. Uh, specifically this big floppy section up here, which is probably the next thing I'm gonna tackle. Uh, this is the, well, it may not be the next thing we tackle, but we'll get to it soon. This is the support for the instrument cluster and it's going to need to close out. Uh, we're also going to need to close out for the top of this, because uh, this isn't just gonna be open to the elements, it's gonna have a cover plate going on it. So I need to be able to remove those, hence the Clecos, but I think we can call this section done for right now. Uh, since I'm not doing the instrument panel yet, I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, and I am going to start digging into spacers for here, spacers for the back, and a couple of other little items. But, uh, all in all, a good day of work. We're rapidly coming, at least I hope rapidly, coming to a close on all of the work for this section of the airplane and for the controls as a whole, because I need to get my butt back onto uh, motor mount stuff, which should be happening very soon. But I'm gonna call it a day, get back out here tomorrow and get to work on the next pieces. And that's all for this one. We got some great work done on the airplane. We're really moving along with the control system. Now, if you're really bored of controls, I've got some good news for you. I think the next video is going to be off of the controls and onto some different systems. So look forward to that one on upcoming videos. And we've got plenty more of this coming soon. So stay tuned for some really exciting stuff and we'll see you guys next time.